How much should you be investing into the stock market by salary? As inflation continues to rise, more and more people are trying to find a way to hedge against inflation. They're trying to figure out, okay, what's that perfect amount I should be investing into my 401k, into my IRAs, into my stock market account in order to retire safely, in order to retire successfully and beat inflation. And so we're going to go over different rules, what experts believe is the perfect amount or the perfect percentage to invest, and also look at different calculators to know, okay, I'm this age, I make this amount of money, how much should I be investing in order to have this amount and to generate this amount of income into my life? And so be sure to subscribe and comment down below what investment strategies you use and what have you seen work for you or your family. So before we figure out what's that very special percentage or the amount we should be investing you should first understand your financial situation understand how much money are you bringing in after taxes how much debt do you have what are your fixed income what different liabilities or different things that you are doing in your spending that inhibits you from actually investing to your fullest potential. And so one day you just gotta sit down and understand, okay, how much money do I make? Let's say you're self-employed or you're a W-2 employee, you have to understand this information. Now, a lot of people believe that you need to pay off all of your debt before you start investing. I'm not exactly in that camp. I believe that even while you're in debt, you should still be investing, especially if you have a W-2 job and your employer matches or contributes to your 401k. And yes, Having debt does stop you from investing to your fullest potential, but in the meantime, you can still be investing. Always be investing, even if it's just a little bit, always be putting money into your retirement account or the stock market. Now, the next thing is to understand your goals. Are you trying to retire by 65 and just work your W-2 job for 30, 40 years? Then that's a simple way to invest, right? That's clear cut. It has been done for many years and people have enjoyed the benefits of taking that route. Let's say you want to invest by the age of 40, right? And you haven't started investing since you were 30 years old. So you essentially have 10 years to retire. Well, hopefully you make a high enough income and you have low living expenses that you can save up hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to invest over the next 10 years. And so understanding your timeline will also help you understand your risk tolerance. Okay, what investment should I be investing in? Should I go more into bonds, more into stocks, more into cash? The other thing you have to consider is during those years of investing, you're going to have different life changes. You may get married, you may have to save for a wedding right? You may have a baby. You may buy a house. You may buy cars. You may have an emergency where you have to pay for some medical bills, right? Taking those into account is important to understand how much you need in order to invest. Now let's look at the magical percentage that a lot of experts talk about. The rule of thumb, I guess you can say, is that 50% of your income is your fixed costs, right? Your mortgage bill, your utilities, your food, your childcare, things of that nature, fixed costs that you can't really change on a month by month basis. 30% is just your regular spending habits, right? Your subscriptions, the amount of money you may spend on different restaurants or the type of food you get at grocery stores, these spending habits that you can control. And then the next 20%, I like to go 20 to 25% is between savings and investing. I like to save at least 10% of my money and then invest 15%. And that percentage can change for you. Let's say you want to invest all of your money. You can do that. If you want to save a more, you want to save 15% and just invest five or 10%, you can do that. Do what's best for you according to your investment goals. So yeah, the rule of thumb, is between 10 to 15 percent of actual investing right and then leave that five to ten percent of just saving money and cash all right so just looking at this chart right here you see the different income levels and you see the different percentages that you can invest so for example let's say you make fifty five thousand dollars which is the median income here in america fifty five hundred would be ten percent a year up to eleven thousand dollars a year for twenty percent and so that's the rule of thumb 
investing anywhere along those lines. Now, a lot of people may be looking at this and say, yo, I cannot afford to even give 10% of my money, right? After taxes and things of that nature, I don't think I can do that, right? I live in a high cost living area and things of that nature. And I understand that. And the thing is with investing is the goal is to just get you into it, be consistent. That's why 401ks are so important because it's out of sight, out of mind, right? They take it out of your paycheck. You know, that's one of the first things they do. And so you just deal with the money that you have. And so if you're self-employed, you have to be more intentional. You have to be more self-disciplined and have more control over taking money out every single paycheck, every time you get a project or things of that nature to put money aside for investing. And eventually you can graduate or you can gradually come to this level, come to 10%, right? You increase your income. All right, now I can give closer to 10% for my investment, right? Okay, my income grew a little bit more. I can give 15% now. And so that's something that you have to understand. And yes, the people have different income levels. Some people can't do that, but eventually you want to get to that level. The other thing with investing is that you have to understand that the IRS put limits to how much money you can put into your investment accounts. And so if you look at this different uh, contribution chart right here for 401ks, the maximum for 2023 is 22,500. They believe the maximum will be around 23,000 for 2024. And that's because of inflation. And so they're allowing people to put more money into their investment accounts. And then uh, total contribution is 66,000. That's includes your portion and your employer portion. And then IRAs like traditional Roths, that's 6,500. That number changes um, based off your age, right? I believe if you're over like 50 years old, you can put around $1,000 more into your traditional Roth IRAs. And then you have these different types of IRAs and then health savings accounts. And so number one thing to concentrate is on your 401k because that's essentially the best route that you're, you're going to have investments because most employers match, right? And so let's say you have a 5% match, which is actually pretty decent, right? That's pretty good. And so what you can do is you can invest 5% of your money. It comes out of your paycheck automatically. You never see that money. So it's like you never had it. And on top of that, your employer will match the identical 5% into your investment account. And so essentially you're doubling your money. You're getting a 100% gain just by investing 5% uh, of your money. And on top of that, you're investing 10% of your money for 5% cost. So this is a great tool to start with investing. Next very important thing is to invest in an IRA or traditional, whether it's traditional or Roth IRA. And so this is money that you can invest outside of your 401k, especially a Roth IRA. If you make lower than the income limits of a Roth IRA, your money can grow tax-free. And that's a huge incentive to investing into a Roth IRA. And let's say you do make more and more money. Let's say you're making around $150,000, right? Or $125,000. You have an income limit that you can't invest more than $22,500. So what do you do with that rest of the money that you want to invest? Well, you can open a Roth IRA and put the rest of the money into your Roth IRA. And, and, and it grows tax-free. Now, let's look at some different calculators that we can spend some time on. So let's Let's say I'm 21 years old. I plan to retire at 65. I make $50,000 a year and save $10,000 or 20% of my income annually for retirement. I've already saved $1,000. I'm 21 years old. I don't have much money into my retirement. I think I'll need 70% of my current income in retirement. I expect an annual rate of 7%. That's the average and it's pretty conservative actually. And then you calculate and you're going to have $1.1 million into your investment accounts by age 65. And your monthly expenses will be around 2,900 and you can expect an income of 3,800, right? And so that's great, right? That you can have that amount just by investing. So uh, you can change this number around. Um, let's say you wanna retire earlier, right? right? And let's say you can't give 20%. Let's say you can only give 10% and you need to retire at 60 years old, right? Now, this is going to change dramatically now. If you recalculate it, you can see that that went almost half. But listen, so hopefully <laughs> you make way more money <laughs> from 21 years old to 60 years old. Hopefully you can quadruple and 5X and 6X and 7X this income. By the time you're 60, you're making well over $150,000, right? And so this changes, right? This changes to $15,000 a year or, or $20,000 a year, right? Based off of, of your income. And so for example, you can even change it. So let's say, okay, starting at 40 years old, 60, and your income is $150,000 
$1,000 and you're still putting 10%, but since 21 to 40, you have maybe $250,000 in your investment account. All right, you recalculate, now your balance is up to $994,000. So you can see that based off of your income. Now, something else that you can do is this is another calculator. So let's say your starting balance is $7,000 and your annual contribution is $6,000 a year. So starting balance, they say you're 32 years old, all right? Over the past five, seven years, you, you didn't really know about your 401k and you happen to have $7,000 in it. And you're starting, you're watching this video and you're getting serious about your investments and your retirement. And so let's say you make $80,000 a year. And let's say you can only invest less than 10%, which is $6,000. Let's make it 10%. Let's say you can only invest $8,000 a year, which is 10% of your annual income, right? Let's say your current age is 32 years old and you want to retire by 65. Uh, the next thing is here, the rate of return will keep it at 7% your tax rate. And the calculation, your ending balance will be $1 million, right? And this will be your monthly income before inflation, right? And so that's, um, and before taxes, that's $6,500. It's 5,500 after taxes, but before inflation. Another thing is that looking at what the S&P performed over the past 10 years, you see that for the 10 years ending in 2016, and that's when the big crash happened in 07, 08, right? 0809. You still had a positive rate of return of 6.6%. Even with the 43% it dropped in 2008 to, to uh, 2009, you still had a positive rate of return of almost 7%. Now, looking at a more longer timeline, 46 years from 1970 to 2016, you have an annual rate of 10%. And so you can, like, over these past couple of years, right, we've been experiencing higher than 7%, close to 10%, but let's just put 8% here. How much does that change it? You, you add in an extra $300,000 to your ending balance. Now that's something we can't control. What you can control is your annual contribution and your salary. And as long as you increase that, you can increase your annual contribution. All right, you all, that's how much you should be investing by salary. So that percentage is anywhere from 10 to 20%, I like to keep it around 15%. But even if you're just starting off and you can't give that much, just start with 1%, start with 2%, start with 0.5%, start somewhere and eventually leave your way up to that 10, 15, 20% annual contribution into your investment account. Make sure you all like this video, comment down below and I'll talk to you all later.